Hello and welcome to Bon Voyage TV. Thank you for joining us. This is a brand new show. I'm Jared Murphy and I'm accompanied on the show by Olivia Van Lierop. Thank you for joining us, oh, Olivia. No problem. I'm very excited to be here. Our mission, Olivia, as you know, and audience, as you will now know, we want to bring the excitement into you in your lazy boy in your lounge room. <laughs> so, but before we do that, I'm a travel agent by trade. I have a company called Bon Voyage Cruises and Travel. I won't bore you with that now. We'll talk about that in coming weeks. But Olivia, you have travelled a lot overseas and what the audience would love to know is that you've travelled a lot on super yachts. Now, not a lot of New Zealanders have got to do that. Mm -hmm. Do you well, own a super yacht? Or <laughs> <laughs> no, unfortunately. Yes, yeah, so I was in Australia at the time and I had itchy feet. So I started calling agencies in Antibes in France and in Florida. That's where the, most of the yachts are based. Yep. And uh, amazingly, within two months, I got a call from a very vivacious American lady, a crew agent, at five in the morning, may I add, unexpected. <laughs> and she was exclaiming that I had- but you were awake and alert. Oh yeah, I was ready, yeah. yeah. And um, she was exclaiming that I had this amazing job on a beautiful 80 meter super yacht that was based in Greece, and I was to fly in two weeks. <laughs> now, with that sort of experience, how long did you do that? So I was on and off for about seven years. So I'm sure Olivia is going to have a lot of stories uh, to tell us. Yes, indeed. A lot of snapshots and pictures. I've got loads of beautiful photos and all sorts. I did lose my laptop in the ocean once or twice, so I lost <laughs> a few photos, but we've got a few. <laughs> well, what we might ask you to do in coming weeks is to bring in some of those lovely photos and perhaps just tell us some stories behind. Yeah, absolutely. We'd love to get the dirt on some of the owners and uh, guests. Mm, I don't know. Probably we not signed some pretty us. serious confidentiality <laughs> agreements at the start, but yeah. Oh, you can give us a few experiences without mentioning names. Yeah, I'm sure yeah. you can do that. Absolutely, yeah. Olivia, I'm sure you're going to add a lot to our show. She's going to have a lot of stories and we will pump her for information over the coming weeks. <laughs> Tonight, as I said, we have uh, Mary from uh, Irish Tourist Board joining us. And Mary's not our only Irish connection tonight. Uh, we have our, a secret little connection. We have a wine sponsor called Invivo Wines. And Invivo uh, is only on two chat shows in the world, Bon Voyage TV, Mm -hmm. And one other with an Irish connection, the Graham Norton Show. Oh, good. Yes, so <laughs> very exciting. We're in good company. Yes. So thank you, Invivo Wines. Thank you, Tim. Tim at Invivo Wines is going to join us uh, as a guest, and he's going to talk about wine and his travels with wine, where he's oh, worked in wineries cool. around the world. So we're looking forward to talking to Tim at Invivo, and of course we hope to get in some tasting. Yes. <laughs> that is the situation. <laughs> bit of tasting. But all the guests who come to, onto Bon Voyage TV will walk away with a bottle of Vivo wine as a wee thank of you. Of course, and it's lovely. So yeah. we're about to see Mary from Irish Tourist Board. So stick with us. We'll just have a short ad break and be back shortly. Ed and Vivo, we've got the biggest crush on Graham Norton. So we flew all the way to his place so he could have a crush on us. <laughs> Graham Norton's own Sauvignon Blanc. Southern Hemisphere grapes meet Norton Hemisphere fab.
Welcome back. Uh, as promised, we have a special guest, Mary Galway from the Irish Tourist Board. Not beamed live from Ireland, but uh, resident Auckland. Mary, uh, this is Olivia, my Hi, partner Olivia. in crime. And thank you for inviting me, Jared. It's great to be here today. It would be rude of us mm. on St. Patrick's Day not to have an Irish connection. And I think I mentioned to you on the phone, I do have an Irish connect connection, obviously the name Murphy, but I am also an Irish citizen. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but Jared. The, but the big admission, I've got a lovely handwritten passport, I don't know if you can see that. With, but with a, a gorgeous photograph. Gorgeous <laughs> photograph. Has expired. I need to renew it. But I have to admit, I've never been to Ireland. So what we would like you to do is transport us there magically, because magic is a big part of the Irish culture, uh, transport us magically to Ireland on St. Patrick's Day. Well, what a great day to go to Ireland, St. Patrick's Day. That's not a problem at all. Transporting you, I think we'll head off for breakfast on St. Patrick's Day and we'll do a little trip down to the Boxty House in central Dublin in the Temple Bar area. Uh, it's cultural. Bars? Bars uh, I don't, don't, don't know. It's an area. We're not on I the bars yet. <laughs> Early in the morning, dear. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll head off, have breakfast, uh, traditional box tea. And Would breakfast include a Guinness though, or not so much on St. Patrick's Day? Well, I d actually don't know the answer to that, but they yeah. are open for the rest of the day and yeah. you can always have a, a Guinness later on at the top while you're overlooking <laughs> the central Dublin. It is a great spot to go and it's a highlight of, uh, of a Dublin city visit without any doubt. Mm. The parade on St. Patrick's Day like, is just watched by millions. Actually, this year, guess who is the Grand Marshal of the parade in Dublin? Uh, it would have to be Graham Norton. He's the most famous mm. Irishman at the moment. What about Bono? Oh, well, it is a guy. I'll let you in on that. Ah. But he's otherwise <laughs> known as a woman. So it's uh, Brendan Carroll, me mammy, oh, Mrs. Brand's boy. Classic. So, yeah. I love so that'll, him. Yeah, he'll create a lot of atmosphere. Yeah. As Mrs. Uh, Brown or as Brendan? Oh, as Brendan. Okay. As Brendan, <laughs> yes. As Brendan. So he's going to lead uh, the parade from uh, Parnell Square all the way along. And of course, you're still with me because you're, you're, you're coming yes, to this, aren't absolutely. you? Absolutely. If in, uh, next year, maybe. And so he will go up O'Connell Street, all around Trinity College, and the whole area up, d up Dame Street to Christchurch. And it does take quite a few hours. Does everyone normally follow the, the parade? Yes, a lot of people follow the parade all the way. They queue up to follow the parade. But you can actually buy parade side seats. And you know, maybe you Corporate and Corporate box? Corporate box. That, maybe you and I us. could do that. <laughs> that's us, yeah. We could do that just for a change. And we see the whole lot sitting on our bum. You know, it'll be a fine day in <laughs> Dublin for sure. And then there's heaps we can do around the parade. Um, we can go and see some of the great sights in Dublin. We can participate in some of the events that go on for the day. Um, we could go to a Cayley. Now, a Cayley is like traditional Irish music. And there's an area around Merrion Square where we can go along, listen to the music. We could practice a few steps from one of the schools Dancing. of dancings there. Do you, do you think, Jared, that's a, an idea? Uh, I'm not the most coordinated dancer. Oh, it doesn't as matter. My family I would tell you, but, <laughs> 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 but give you, it a go. You give it a go. Yeah. Good man yourself. So I would love to see this Kaylee dancing, the special Irish dancing. Could you give us a little demo? I will give you a little demo, but you're putting me under a lot of pressure. It's good fun. Uh, <laughs> you can do it as individuals or as groups. So oh, group for St. Patrick's Day, it would be group thing. Boy, yes. girl, boy, girl type of thing. Come on. We have a go. Oh, no. Up you get Gerard. Up you get Gerard now. So I don't know how this I'm is going to work. You have to hold my hand here. And all we have to do is hop two, three, four, five, <laughs> six, seven, <laughs> one, two, oh, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. But it's much better fun. Much better sport. <laughs> much better <laughs> when you have a few lessons in advance. Yeah. Don't you reckon? Yeah. <laughs> I think so. Well, we oh, were dear. expecting this. <laughs> Well, that was absolutely gorgeous. I think you've got a little bit of work to do there, Gerard, but that's all right. Uh, I know a that. Bit of practice. <laughs> hey, um, I used to get taken along to these Kaylee dances when I was a really small child with my nana and my granddad for but New Year's Eve parties. Well, my father's Dutch, but on my mum's side, my nana is. Uh. That it's explains Irish. a lot. Oh, yes. oh yes. is that right, Olivia? Not a surprise. A lot of New Zealanders have Irish ancestry. So where, oh, where is she from? 
She's from Tipperary, I believe. Oh, really? Yes, Oh, yes. I wonder where in Tipperary. I'm not 100% sure. She's told me a million times, but okay. unfortunately, I tend to glaze over during these periods of long-winded chats we about our heritage. We should ring her. <laughs> yeah, I could give her a call. Call a friend, shall I? Find All a right. friend. Find a friend. All right, we'll, give Nana, we'll get Nana on the phone. Oh, woo -hoo. All right. This is, in, this the is exciting. The instinct says Nana's up. What she's, what's she doing? Yeah, let's see. She might be having an Irish whiskey today. Could be, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, from the Schmills. Could be having a family, a bit of a dance. Yeah, family absolutely. around. Absolutely. She right, could so do. We'll pop it on speaker, shall we? <laughs> shall I hold it up It'd to my microphone if she's there. piece? <laughs> Hopefully she's here. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Nana, it's Olivia. How are you? Oh, God. I've been <laughs> having problems. Did everything come through? No, no, I didn't. She was going to be sending me an email about um, our Irish heritage so I could be a little bit more up to date with this conversation. But no, so I haven't got it. So I was wondering if you could tell me exactly where we are from in Ireland. I, yeah, well, I was just going to say, I sent it to your Gmail. I tried to do your constantly <laughs> one and it wouldn't go. And um, <laughs> so it's probably a website, is it? It's probably a what, sorry? It's probably a website. It mine wouldn't take my it wouldn't take that address. It kept saying it was new. Oh, okay. Oh that's a yeah. shame. Well we'll work it out later. Um, yeah, but it is I have sent it and then I said to get from two. So that's <laughs> Olivia Van Lira at gmail dot com. That's yours. That's the one. Yes, that's, that's the it. One. That's it. Should be there. Where's she from, Nana? We need to know where so she's from. You're on speakerphone, Nana, so we need to know where I'm from. <laughs> In Tipperary. Well, we're from the province of Mon Munster. Munster. Munster is, yes. Um, uh, is that Tipperary? No. Right? Tipperary yeah, is, is in Munster. Oh. And, um, oh dear, where are we? What town in Tipperary? Um, and the area in Tipperary is a place called um, Shinnacal. S-H-A-N-A-K-I-L-L. -L. Shinnacal, you heard of that one? No? We'll have to look that up. <laughs> no, but we know about yeah, Tipperary being far away. Yeah. <laughs> it's a long way to Tipperary. <laughs> <laughs> and it's... Um, all right, well, Nana. Well, thank you so much. We better we better run, but that's perfect. Thank you so much. No, and no that's great. And um, I'll see you next week at Genevieve's for dinner. Pardon? I'll see you next week at Genevieve's for dinner. No, that'll be lovely. And so open up your thing, and, and you'll okay. get a better idea. Will um, do. Yeah, and okay. um, all the very best. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Love you. Bye. 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 Okay. Bye. Bye. Thanks Bye, Nana. Nana. Bye. That was never. See, see, this is why I glaze over sometimes. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we'll oh, look yeah. up where Nana's from and find out where Olivia's from. We'll yeah, we, next week. we must do. Uh, but she was, uh, your Nana was just mentioning towns lands. And when you're doing ancestry, a town land is really important in the research factor, just out of interest. Oh, okay. And I did hear her say that it was North Tipperary, South Tipperary Both. connections. Yeah. And then she said County Clare. Yeah. So you, your ancestry is quite incredible. Yeah. Good over. places to visit. Yes, I know. We Ooh, will get there. Yeah. Yes. Because <laughs> in Tipperary, you've got the Rock of Cashel, mm. which is this amazing uh, royal site from the Irish families and that's where the head of the kings of Munster lived for you know donkey's years in, in Irish times before yeah you Is know before the she... Normans invaded yes she did she mentioned yeah. about Munster yeah, so it's a great area Olivia we loved your nana but I don't know if we can use her as a regular guest we've only got yeah. 30 minutes not TV material <laughs> oh no no she's really good <laughs> <laughs> but you know, having having said that, your nana did mention Tipperary Cork Limerick. I was thinking Cork, Gerard. You mentioned Cork, didn't I you? Did. Your connections are yes. from that region. My uh, grandfather or grandfather's, or well, my grandmother. They were both Murphys. They were both uh, trained as master tailors from Cork, and uh, a place called Montanotti. The posh area, Olivia. By oh, the way, very posh very area. Of I had Cork. heard that. Yes, <laughs> but supposedly Murphy. Italian. Um, hello, I'm not <laughs> quite sure where that fits in. <laughs> but you know, Cork City is quite interesting. There's a, a bit. You have Guinness in Dublin, in Cork City. You have Beamish, and you have Murphy's Stout. Oh, 
Ah, yes. So thinking of a little visit, uh, one of us could start down one side of the street and taste all the Beamish, cool, and the yeah. other could start up the other side and, and do all who, the Murphys. see who survives. Yeah, yeah <laughs> see who survives. That's a good way. Well, that's one of the things you could do in Cork mm. oh, on St. Patrick's Day in Cork as well. Could you do a, a tasting so you'd have small, you know, you'd have the Murphy Stout and the Guinness and all of those things? And you'd like a wine tasting? Yeah, well, I suppose. Why not? Yeah, let's do yeah, it. You, let's could. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> you could, or you could do a, a sort of water tasting all the way down uh, McCurtain Street in Cork. I'm only joking about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think we could go to the Blarney Stone to kiss it. Yeah. Or, in fact, we might not need to go to the Blarney Stone to kiss it, but it's a place where visitors go for fun up to the top of Blarney Castle. Kiss Is that the one we Stone. have to hang upside down? Yes, mm -hmm. apparently, yeah. I'm not good with heights. What? <laughs> oh, yeah, but you'd enjoy the trip up the stairs. It's excellent. And then you could pop along afterwards and have a really nice lunch nearby, or you could do, as many Kiwis do, hop into the local dairy and just get themselves a really nice coffee, make themselves a sandwich and in the sit dairy. outside. Yeah, in the dairy, uh, come outside and look up at the castle. Oh, just, beautiful. You know, but you want enjoy to have your a classic Irish meal as well, wouldn't you? So what is that? I imagine, you know, stews and pies and... That sort of thing is that true? there are lots of stews and pies Mira, i love all this talk of pies because my wife often criticizes me in my pie eating but now i can explain to her it's part of my irish culture and heritage <laughs> and get away with it brilliant fair enough thank if you she for accepts that. <laughs> if she accepts that that's really cool okay enough about pies jerry <laughs> you can never have enough on? about pies <laughs> All right, we've got our magic wand. What more can you tell us about this beautiful island? Well, still in Cork, but the, the Queenstown in Cork is where the Titanic sailed from. Oh. But actually, it was built in Belfast. Did you know that, Jared? I did. And yeah? also, no, they've got a big um, Titanic museum there now, haven't they? Yeah, they've got an amazing Titanic museum in Belfast. Um, it opened uh, to celebrate, celebrate for want of a better word, 100 years and uh, you can take an amazing trip to the docks there tells you the complete history of it and what it actually cost to you to sail in the days gone by plus it counts a num number of rivets just such an amazing history i've heard it's really good yeah it is absolutely amazing in a great place does it have the jewelry that leo lost over the side of the boat <laughs> oh, I don't know if it has the jewellery, <laughs> but it does have, gr it does have uh, some original furniture and, you know, it's actually built as it was in a sense. Well, yeah. It's a must see for me when I go. Uh -huh. yeah. Good stuff. Other stuff to see in, in Belfast, it's such a musical city. There's lots of great musical festivals throughout the year. And Belfast has been totally regenerated. Uh, take a walking tour or do a hop on, hop off. Great way to see any city, it doesn't mm. matter. Mm. Any of the big cities, Dublin, Cork, Belfast, Galway, all of those, wonderful way to get around. Quick mm. way to get around to if you're in a hurry. Yeah. And you can just park the car and get someone else to take the string. So I've been to see the Titanic Museum. It, it must be late afternoon by now. We've got a little bit of time left. What? What else are you going to cram into Ooh, the stay? I think, why don't we cram a little trip over to Derry City? It'll take us about an hour's drive, a quick drive. We'll get that in before dinner, that could be good. Oh, we'll, <laughs> we'll get that in before <laughs> evening dinner, that's right. We can do the walls of Derry on a great walking tour, maybe with the Martin McCrossan tour. Uh, the walls of Derry, uh, the only city in Europe with its walls completely intact. It's got four gates. Yeah. It's about a mile in uh, circumference, and Martin McCorson will take you on the most magnificent trip around the walls of Derry that you will ever had. Yeah. Tell you all about the sites. If we could fit in the Guild Hall, that would be even better. Mm. Uh, and then we could just go into the courtyard uh, and find Kate's pantry and sample some more grub. Okay, Mary. After that walk around the walls. Um We've been in Ireland. We've been in Ireland all day, and I don't. We, we haven't really had a drink yet. So oh dang, I forgot about <laughs> I'm that. I'm drying out. Okay, well, we, lots of places to eat and drink in Derry City. I can tell you, but I would dearly love to take you back through Giant's Causeway. We could fit that in, couldn't we? That's it's UNESCO World Heritage Site. I have seen the photos of that. Yeah, there's a great place down the road from there. We could hop to first. Hop to beforehand. Hop to. <laughs> oh, hop, hop to, to beforehand yes. for your drink and some grub, and it'll give you enough energy to go on till 12 o'clock tonight at least. 
Well, we have to stay awake to see St. Patrick's Day finished. It's been a fantastic day, Mary. I've enjoyed it. Yes. You've enjoyed it. I've I think Nana enjoyed it. I think she did. She had a great time. <laughs> mm. So it's been a wonderful day, and thank you so much for coming in and sharing it with us. It's great, and I can tell you lots more if you ever want any information from me. Tourism Ireland, the people you call, I'm Mary, gives a ring. Find so us online, ireland.com. Or call Bon Voyage Cruises and Travel, and we will do that for you. Or call my Nana. Or call <laughs> Nana. <laughs> brilliant, <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> yeah, the expert of experts. <laughs>
Uh, the naming ceremony was followed by a tour of the ship and a lunch we understand was prepared by the supervision of P&O's consultant chef Marco Pierre White. I've seen him on telly and I'd imagine um, he would have made rather a nice meal Oh, it would have been divine. And Prince Philip, he probably eats a bit. Yes, <laughs> and we think she deserves it after sitting out in the cold and they keep doing March that to in England. Them. Poor old Queenie. <laughs> Okay, should we jump What's along next? to the next one? All right, so now we're cruising over to Vegas, and we all know that Vegas is obviously renowned for its quickie weddings. So the world's largest wheel, the High Roller, which opened last March in, La in Las Vegas, is now That's offering the big a Ferris wedding wheel, service. Right? Yeah, it's a huge wheel, uh, takes you high above the strip, 30, it takes 30 minutes and can take up to 40 guests in your private pot. The cost is from 2400 but you can add a private bar service for another 1000 US. So you can have 40 people in your wedding, That's a pretty in the pot of the Ferris wheel, yep. 30 minutes, yep. which is how long some of those weddings but last. Yep, bish, bosh, bash, done. Straight to the divorce, <laughs> <laughs> probably downstairs. Uh, Brilliant. Pretty cheap wedding though for these days, I thought, 40 bad. guests. Yeah, I might try it. <laughs> um, right, now moving on to local news. So Auckland Airport has won again. I heard that. Did you? Mm. This is very exciting. So for the seventh year in a row, Auckland was named the best airport in Australia Pacific at the 2015 Skytrax World Airport Awards held this week in Paris, last week. How many Paris. were in it? How many entered? So 13 million, well there was, sorry, 550 airports. Um, and there was a survey of 13 million airport customers and 112 different nationalities. So pretty huge. Yeah, Auckland is a pretty good airport. It yeah, it is. Punches above its weight. I like it. Yeah, it is beautiful. They do a good job. Mm. I love walking out, you know, when you've come from overseas and you come home and it is just like walking home, you know, they have the beautiful native bird sounds and all of that. Yeah, you know when you're home. Yeah, you need it. So Chief Executive Adrian Littlewood said Auckland Airport's success is due to the efforts of many thousands of workers, as well as companies and border agencies who are all committed to making passengers' journeys better, despite the challenge of significant increases in the number of passengers they're and aircrafts using the They're airport. growing a lot and they're always under construction, but it's yep. amazing what's hidden behind some of those construction walls. Yep, absolutely. And we have no idea. They keep ma making it better and better. So. Yeah, but that's really special for little old New Zealand, isn't it? Yeah, they do well. Mm. Well done, Auckland Airport. <laughs> well, Olivia, that's the end of the show. So I'd like to thank you oh, for welcome. agreeing to join me on Bon Voyage TV. <laughs> a bit of a risk. You never yeah. know what you were letting oh, yourself in for. but it's been so much fun. Yeah. And we'll have a lot more fun oh, as, we, as we go on. So thank you. Thanks okay. to Nana, of course. Yes. And we need to thank Mary from the Irish Tourist Board. She oh. took us on a one day tour of Ireland on St Patrick's Day, which is great. And we're going to be bringing many more guests like Mary uh, into your lounge room. Channel 83, Face TV, 8.30 p.m. on Tuesdays and Sundays. So look out for us, join us on Facebook, and I will see you, Olivia, next week. Yeah, look forward to it. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night.